Steve, I forgot that you said you have old guy, young guy, and you didn't tell me what it is, so now I'm anxious about it. But you'll have to wait till till the end of the episode to listen to that part. And that's a tease to get you, the listener, to listen to this whole episode. There you go. It's always worth it. Wait to the end. It's always worth it. I don't know if it'll be worth it or not. Okay. I'm anxious. We'll I'm anxious. Anyways, I'm not anxious, though, because I'm happy. Because you're here, I'm here. This is the Stuff Summer Says podcast with... Steve! With Steve. Um, all right, tonight's episode's going to flow slightly differently. Not that differently, but uh, we're, we're recording our half before, and then we're going to talk to uh, my friend Eric Sion, who we sent to the IMAX viewing of the Penn State game this weekend um, to kind of see how that happened and, and what that experience was like. So... I'm going to say we'll get to that when we get to that. We'll, 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 we'll feather that in. This is a peek behind the curtain. Um, I think we've got some other stuff to talk about. We've got Peacock uh, and that experience to talk about. I think we should also just talk about the game itself. Um, we also, uh, Steve wants to talk about the, the biggest, slightly saddest sports media story of the week. Um, I think that that's a good topic to talk about. Um I think we'll save the, the, there's a storm brewing, it feels like, with Big Noon, at least the, the, the outer reaches of, of Penn Staters being upset about Big Noon is now exploding into another school. I think maybe we'll save that for another time, though. Um, so that's, uh, that's this week's show. That's, that's, that's how this is going to work. Um, let's talk about the game. I, I, think, I think that that Penn State performance was probably one of the most confident performances I've seen from Penn State in quite some time. Kind of didn't leave it like like didn't leave a doubt. It was it was pretty much a this is the game we're gonna beat you and and, and then we're gonna pack up and leave and go home. Um, I I was very impressed with how they responded. I thought it was a very confident effort. I thought Drew probably played his best game. Maybe one of well no the USC game was probably better. Yeah, well, he had three interceptions that game, so now I'm going to argue with myself. Uh, so I thought that was good. Um, I thought the the passing game was there, the running game was there. Abdul Carter really started to kind of shine through and took another step forward. So I thought that was probably all things considered one of Penn State's, if not maybe Penn State's best game this season. Maybe, maybe all of last season too. I guess that Michigan State game kind of comes to mind but that i don't know how much that one mattered and this one probably mattered a little bit more because they just took care of business when they were supposed to take care of business and need to take care of business right now yeah it it was good enough to be boring right like it was just it just it it wasn't wasn't competitive it it wasn't yeah it it really wasn't competitive like there was never in doubt right and and the the few outlying things that oh well washington if if their running back gets gone they, they could maybe do this and you know they're it just never happened. Penn State was just the better team start to finish and kept it that way. Didn't do anything stupid. Um, yeah, it, it was the kind of game they probably needed. Yeah. Just for a little bit of self-confidence, probably a little bit of fan motivation and whatever else and to feel legitimate. And if you've got to win the final four games of the regular season, that's the way you have to do the first one. And they did it and they did it convincingly. Yeah, I, I think there was never really, a, they never let Washington into the game. I think would be the best way to say that. Even when they, even it, after the second half, when when Tyler Warren had that sort of fumble, which I still don't understand. Like, I think Washington never really got into the game and got momentum. Um, so it wasn't. I wasn't concerned. I never felt concerned by any of that, really. So I think that was a for a loss coming off of a loss to Ohio State and what we have seen before. Even last year, they didn't. You know. They didn't lose after a loss last year, but they had that struggle with Indiana when they probably shouldn't have had that struggle with Indiana um, in particular. And I think that's just like, it was a nice deep breath. It was a nice deep breath. Um, how was the, how, who won the chili cook-off? That's the big news of the week. The defending champion, Sarah, won the chili cook-off by one vote, wow. one single vote. She got 42 votes. Second place got 41 votes. We had more than 100 people show up. So it was... It was a well attended with five different chilies. So, what was her? What was the secret the secret sauce this year? Uh, I think it might have been more or less the same recipe. She does. She just does a good job. Okay. Like it was just. It's just a good. She does chili. a good chili. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they were all good. I mean, they were. We're, we're working on the, the line of order, right? Because like when you're fifth in the line of five, maybe not everybody gets down and tastes you. You know, it's just mm. there's 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 some a bias art, is what you're saying, right? There 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 is some location bias, perhaps, but. Um, 
five was good. I think everybody had a good time. We had, what was the new addition this year? Like two years ago, Russ showed up with a chef cap, which kind of ticked Sarah off because she is indeed a chef, um, which was great. This year, Danny showed up with the sign of the baby, the one-year-old baby and a pumpkin with a sign beside her. I'm, I'm the baby's mom, and she's clearly pregnant, right? So going for the pity vote. That's a, yeah, um, that's a pity vote. We might need to. But her chili was good, and she okay. finished second. So it was a good time. Right. Good, good time. We had people from, lots of people from Washington showed up. A couple regulars who were near us came over and said, hey, if we're here, you know, when do you do the chili cook-off this week? We thought it might have been last week. I'm like, oh, no, noon game, too early for that. So it's today? Yeah. Oh, that's great. We'll go get breakfast. We'll be back. So it was right. it okay. was good all the um, way around. All right. Did you did you make it to the tailgate after dark portion of the, the evening, or did you pack up before then? No, because I, didn't I tell you? This is now the food part of the podcast. I did a, I did a brisket. Oh, that's so, right. Oh, so you so did get a smoker. Have, congratulations. Got a smoker, came home. The brisket was done at 6 o'clock, put it at 6 in the morning. It was done at 6 o'clock. Might have been a shade overdone, but still very good. So we sat home and watched brisket and ate mashed potatoes and watched the game on Peacock. Okay. All right. Um, we'll get to the Peacock in a second. I just want to say that the, the tailgate after dark portion of the yeah, how was it? It was actually pretty cool. Like it was neat. I, I got up, I stood up on uh, one of my friends' truck beds and just kind of like took a peek around. And a lot of people had lights. A lot of people kind of like leaned into it. We saw some disco parties going on. Um, so I thought that was neat. Um, how was the Peacock broadcast? Because you watched the Peacock, and you weren't. You weren't. There was a text pretty early in the evening from Mister Sam. Well, they missed. They they missed the first replay right on on the targeting, like. There was no replay up. Okay. Just, it was just... didn't exist till like five minutes later in the broadcast, maybe even longer than that. It just wasn't special. Like I, I, and I don't, not that it needs to be special, but, and I know everybody streams, right? So it's, streaming isn't that special or unique, but go ahead. Every team has one game a season that's streaming. Do something a little different. Give me, there's no pregame show, right? Because there's no pregame team, but give me the all 22 look with the wide stadium and, and the game starting in five minutes, as opposed to your program will start shortly and not starting until right at kickoff, right? Like do something that looks like you're investing some time, do a, a peacock peak, right? And get me some back behind the scenes stuff that's different as opposed to creamery B-roll coming out of commercial. It, it, and there's nothing wrong with it. it. just It just felt like a normal broadcast, but light. And it felt like people, I'm sure people at every school that have a, a streaming exclusive game are saying, oh, well, why do we got to do this? And they're grumbling. Give them something just a little different so they can say, oh, okay, I spent my $4.99 or $1.99 or $7.99 or whatever deal they got or didn't get. They're trying. And, and, and I just didn't get that feel. And I, and I don't think that's a heavy lift. I don't know. I, so I went back and watched, I normally watch the Big Ten on 60 uh, broadcast, but I watched, I actually watched like pretty much the first quarter in the traditional on Peacock format. Um, he, my, what I didn't enjoy about it, and I think why a lot of people are, are upset about it, is there wasn't reverence given to the whiteout. Um, I didn't think the lead-in was special. I, 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 I didn't get that experience of your game will start soon and then the, the, the game just kind of starting. But a, a promo video, a little pump-up video, um, give... Hell, you've got Michael Robinson on staff. Let him narrate. Do a little special package. It, just something to, to tease it a little bit more. Um, I think... And I get your both teams, right? you got to watch the Washington sure. thing and not overstep in the bounds. But there's something you can do that's low-hanging fruit, and it just feels like you made an effort. Well, and like... So the reason I, that comes to mind is they've been doing that more with Saturday... Or sun, not Saturday Night Football. Saturday, Sunday Night Football. And they had Michael Keaton come on and talk about um, the Steelers and then him being Batman. So they talked about Gotham when they played the Jets, right? Like, it kind of had this cool intro there. That type of thing just kind of builds the emotion. And I, I don't know, it, it was very, for as good as NBC's broadcasts have been, and for as good as the Peacock broadcast was last year, I thought they did a, a pretty darn good job, a better job than BTN um, does with a with an FBS opponent when when Penn State played Delaware last year. I just thought that there was no reverence shown, and I I think that's why a lot of people were were grumbly the, over the last twenty four forty eight hours. I thought that was big. I think Paul Carstero is fine. Like I think he's he's good, steady, solid. Colt McCoy needs a lot more reps, and I don't know if he's he's ready for the reps of that stage. And I, I I'm a little disappointed. 
uh, that, you know, P- NBC didn't go hire somebody that's a little bit more seasoned there because it shows that Colt McCoy, does he have flashes of good announcing? Yes, but it does he not? Yeah, more often than not. And I think that's another reason why people grumble. Um, so I, I didn't enjoy that. Um, I'm I, the, the one thing I did enjoy I thought they mixed the sound well, and I know we've talked about sound, particularly with Fox's broadcast, that it's like kind of all over the place. They piped in the right amount of sound of crowd noise to make it feel authentic, and a lot of other people kind of called that out, so maybe I was just looking for that. Um, but yeah, that's that was kind of my initial take on the Peacock broadcast. I think reverence goes a long way, though. Yeah, and I think that's the right word. I mean, I mean, maybe I was saying respect and treat it, but I just... And it has to happen with every program that does this, right? Every team that gets this is grumbling a little bit. Every program has a reason, has something that makes them special, whether it's Nebraska, whether it's UCLA, whether it's whatever, whether the host team is. Just a little something that makes it different. Just, And again, not a heavy lift. Give me give me some B-roll and a short little feature to start or something. Because the, 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 the downside then with the branding is, right, you still have the drums from the Big Ten Saturday night on the screen. And you never did anything with the drum. Hell, if you're going to beat the drum with the regular broadcast, beat it here. This yeah. is a, at least tie it in. So that's all. Like, I mean, it was it was workmanlike. It was fine. It's a late season game against a team that's you know not super good. You know, you're not yeah. going to get the best whatever. But they, I just it just feels like there's low hanging fruit where they could make a streaming game, and people would say, oh, it's going to be a streaming game. They're going to do this right, even even if it's putting the hashtags on the score bug and encouraging fans to play along with us on social or follow along or share where you're watching from. At least you'd be trying for a different kind of engagement then or something. I think I, I like, I like that because like, I think one of the make me feel, make me feel like I'm missing out as a neutral. If I'm a neutral college football fan, make me feel like I'm missing out by not tuning into the whiteout. Um, and, and I think there's a barrier of entry. I, I think, I think we're still, I say this like we're TV executives. I think we're still afraid to experiment or try something new um, with these streaming services. Like everything still feels relatively same set broadcast. I think maybe the, the Thursday night broadcast on Amazon is kind of the only one that feels like it's pushing the envelope of these like exclusive broadcast uh, streamed games. Um it kind of feels like news organizations, sorry to cut you off, news organizations, when they first went online, right? Like they didn't know how to establish a paywall or didn't know what they were going to do and they didn't make their content different or special, right? It was just, okay, here this is and we're giving it to you for free. Then when we want you to pay for it, you're going to grumble because it's not any different or special. It, it feels like kind of that. If I got to pay for it, and it, just give me a little bit of something special. Pretend you care. So let's, let's touch on that topic because I think this is part of the, the issue too. I wonder how many people, Penn Staters included, but I think maybe Big Ten fans is a better way, body of people to ask this question to. I wonder how many of those people would grumble if Peacock wasn't such a foreign streaming service in that everybody pretty much has Netflix. Most people have Hulu. Pretty much everybody has Amazon Prime. Those are kind of the big three. Peacock and Paramount Plus are still kind of these fringe ones that I don't know that, like, I don't know... Like we watch the we enjoy the office, so like that's one reason why we have it, aside from football season. But I, I don't know that there's an extra reason, and I think that has something to do with this whole process as well, and and one of the reasons why people are grumbly. So I got going back to your point of like, give me a reason to tune in, make the experience different, do it. I I was surprised, like, why not have like let's just like spitball an idea but like why not have a student section camera and show the game from the student section or show the the crowd meter of what the student section how loud the student section is something like that to show the difference i I think you know i think was it nbc or one of the 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 platforms a few years ago they only showed the thursday night games from the sky camp do something like that have like have fun with it so i agree with your the news news organization's point is a good way of looking at it like Oh, we can do more here. There's more play to to play with. I want people to take advantage of that. Yeah, and I think the, the the student section cam again. You set one up somewhere, you lock it down so you don't have to have a person manning it, basically, and you take the feed. Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not trying to make them rework their budget. And to your point, 
Peacock about 36 million subscribers, Netflix 280 million. So a difference, but it's not like NBC is unresourced. And here's realistically now to, to bang on Big Ten Saturday night as it gets pulled into this conversation unintentionally. Oops, why us? Um, they've got all those commentators working Big Ten Saturday night, right? You can't, you can't get, I'd like to hear more Todd Blackledge at halftime. Instead, I've got three guys standing on the field, one of which is Michael Robinson, and that's fine. But give me one less person there and let them go to, to the Peacock game. Like, yeah. I don't Something. Yeah, just give it, and it goes back again, but give it some reference. Give it some, make it feel different. Make it, try something new. And I think that's what, I, I think, I think if it doesn't work, like I think at least you tried something new and we're grumbling about you trying something new as opposed to the same old thing. I just got to, well, we already have Peacock, but like, I just got to fork over extra dollars. Um, so, um, it seems like everybody is at least a little bit more apt, but I have a has a bit better appetite towards Peacock though this year um, than last year in terms of like the the preamble to the game. I thought that was no, noticeable as well. Um, we'll check in with Eric. We'll see what Eric has to say about the IMAX experience. Um, I'm interested to hear that. Um, maybe that was the the thing that they're doing different, and we we're just kind of short sighting that there. Steve, I am not going to call this person a guest this week. One, to not inflate his ego. And two, we paid him to basically be on this show. Well, sort of. So he's our first ever correspondent. Yes, he is our first ever correspondent. We have Been those now. for years for that to happen. That's great. Um, so <laughs> Some people might be jealous. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, our correspondent this week is uh, Mr. Eric Sion, my, my dear, dear friend, also a Penn State alum, um, all around good person. Usually happy to be wrong. Um, Eric, how are you? <laughs> very happy to be wrong. You're, uh, very very I'm happy to be about Penn State. Um, Okay, so l- we sent you out on a mission. Well, I, I sent out a blurb to the world and said, does anybody want to go to the IMAX thing? And I don't know why I didn't think to just text you first, because you are the biggest movie fan, movie goer that I know of. We see the background with all of the superheroes. Um, and... I don't know why I didn't think to text you, but you were like, I'll do it. And you did. So I here's what I want to know. Why did you want to go see Penn State football and IMAX? Let's start there. Well, I thought doing you a favor, no. you know, you're, okay. you're my friend. Okay. <laughs> I think you asked me uh, like sarcastically. You probably thinking. I, I didn't think me. you were going to say yes. No. Yeah. No, but I, I didn't even know about that until you texted me about it. And then when I was there, I, I ran into our other mutual friend, Maddie Pryor. Um, there and we were both saying like we did not see this really promoted that well so um no and i thought it would be cool to just see it in a different in a different um in a different way a different format um instead of just peacock on my small tv um so yeah i thought it was it was it was fine it was it was just cool seeing it like on a big screen like that we well so let's we had trouble the 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 main thing that we had trouble with was buying your ticket. So for whatever reason, all of the other, most of the other um, IMAX theaters that were showing it had it listed, but it was not till what Thursday night that you had texted me. I think Wednesday or Thursday that was, the tickets I think it were was available. When, it was Wednesday night when I finally just checked it and it showed tickets are now available for purchase. So yeah, it was just a few days before kickoff. So you're, you're driving to the movie theater. This is obviously the first time you've, ever driven to a movie theater um were your ex to watch a penn state football game were your expectations met exceeded how did how, where would you rate Unknown? it was it was so it was a little underwhelming in terms of there were only maybe like 13 or 14 other people there and it was all penn staters obviously being in new jersey playing a team like washington you're not gonna have many washington husky fans there so it was all penn staters and like it was kind of awkward because we were all sitting there watching and if a good play would happen, there'd be some like like clapping, but it wasn't like a sports bar or a, a, another public setting where people like cheering at the top of their lungs. There was one woman who was a little more into it than the rest of us. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty chill. Did she sneak some yeah. alcohol in or what? What was that? Did she sneak some alcohol in or what? No, I think she was just a, a passionate fan. Okay. And she was just really into it. Like every play, she was like, go Nick or go Catron. So um, no, that was entertaining. And it was just cool. I mean, seeing James Franklin's like shiny bald head on a big IMAX screen, that was <laughs> that was something. Um, 
So, so yeah, I'd say my expectations were maybe a little underwhelming. And I know, Darren, you were tweeting about this morning, like the broadcast itself, that's a whole other story, was like hearing Colt McCoy's like <laughs> subpar uh, a- analyzing on a big screen like that was interesting, but it was good. It was, it was enjoyable. So were, was there any, did, was there anything special different about the broadcast that you felt that you I mean, you've watched however many Penn state football games, was there anything that felt different than a traditional broadcast? No, it was it, literally just taking what you would put on your TV, on your phone, on the Peacock app and just throwing it on a big screen. And this was just a regular IMAX screen. I know they have the other ones that are like, massive massive this was just a regular on max one so it's not like the sound or the picture was like super you know the quality was like that much better it was really just sticking it on a bigger screen and in a big in a theater with with a lot of seats most of them empty um yeah so so yeah that, that was <laughs> yeah that's what i wanted when watch when we were watching right there's only again we talked about the broadcast itself being kind of under underwhelming right mm-hmm. so they certainly weren't sending two crews there so but i kept looking for the shot that was like some sweeping big shot that would work on a screen that would that would differentiate it for the folks who were watching on imax and i don't think that was there either it was just you know so i mean like, it's cool that they try stuff but if you're going to try it again give me give the folks there something if you're gonna do it imax give me something that looks like it works in imax you know something yeah it was it was just the base, the regular broadcast, just throwing on a bigger screen. So here's my here's my question: Movie theater, were, were there previews? No previews. No, it was just before the game. I, Darren, I think I sent you the picture. It just said Penn State versus Washington, like shown in IMAX. So, and I was wondering going in, were they going to dim the lights like a regular movie theater? No, they kept the lights on. Oh, really? Yeah, they kept the lights on. Obviously, people going in and out on their phones. Okay. It's different. It's not a regular movie where everyone has to phone away, everyone be quiet. So people are going in and out the whole time, talking because it's obviously just a sports game. Different, different setting. Were the felt weird commercials being in there without trailers? Oh yeah, it had to be commercials, right? Yeah, the no, so so no trailers, no previews. The game just started, and they you know did who was it, Paul, whatever, and oh, Colt sure. McCoy, yeah. just like welcome to State College. They did their whole intro. Here's the thing: during the commercials, it was this. <laughs> You could ask Maddie about this later because we were cracking up about it. It was just a a gray screen with like now streaming on Peacock, the Fall Guy, that movie with Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt. Another um, what's the 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 one with the singers with Snoop Dogg? Just and and another movie. Just these three. Not even a rotation. Just now on Peacock. Now streaming on Peacock. These three. They didn't rotate any other promoting any other programs. And it was this jingle, this song. That was stuck in my head on the drive home that was just over and over and over so yeah that that was weird like you'd think peacock nbc would want to advertise like other programs other things they have going on nope what about halftime yeah i was gonna ask about that um they they showed for the first half of halftime it was just that same gray screen with (laughs) promoting those three programs but then they finally went to the studio show with maria taylor nicole auerbach and who was a josh perry Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Castle. I don't know who else is there. And they did like highlights, you know, the typical halftime show. But that was only for part of it. But every commercial, no, there was no commercial. It was just this screen promoting the three, the three programs and or movies and uh, and that one musical tune just not on repeat throughout. That's wild. Um, Can you hum it yeah. for us? I could bring it up. I, I, uh, I, did the, not, I did the SoundCloud so I could pull it up on my phone. Oh my God. This is it for you those of you that don't know Eric, which is pretty much all of you. Uh Eric has that SoundCloud app on his uh on his like homepage of his, yeah. his iPhone. He's like always- the old one where you can identify songs? Yes. yes. Yeah. Called- I miss that from my smartphone. See, that's an old guy, young guy. That was the coolest trick of phones. It's called All of Me and it's even got like the peacock thing. <laughs> it's this. Can you I don't know if you can hear it. We will I'll I will grab it. He'll pump it I'll, in. I'll pump it in. I will pump yeah, it in. It's- um Okay. It's just a very basic like tune. That was it. Was it would you do it again? So it so you know me. I don't like to go to games in person or go into like watch it at a bar or whatever if I think we're gonna lose. Cause then I'll be around people, I'll be it'll annoy me, like I'll just be in a bad mood around other people. I'd rather be in like the isolation of my own home. Um 
So I would go again if it was like this, like a game that we were pretty much, you know, it, you know, we were we we're gonna win. It was it was not a obvious win, but like we were what two touchdown favorites. Right. So if it was something like that, I would probably go again. What would be the biggest change you would make to make the experience better? I mean, it's what's it's a it's just a sporting event, so I don't know what they would do. You mean like what? Like 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 if you would do? Like what would you want from NBC to make it feel a little bit more special? Because what you're saying to me is like it didn't necessarily. What I'm hearing is it didn't necessarily feel any different than just watching it on anywhere else. Right. I mean, I don't. I mean, off the top of my head, I don't really. I can't really think of anything else. I mean, the the commercial thing was honestly very very. That's like the biggest takeaway of the actual broadcast itself was this commercial was just the That's only hilarious. they were just they didn't wrote like they have so many different programs and movies and documentaries and stuff why wouldn't they like advertise that that's just, i guess a criticism it's not really something that that i want it's just like the biggest thing i could take away from the presentation itself did you what food did you have did you have any food i got um you know amc they have those flatbread pizzas Mm -hmm. uh, which I actually like. Mm -hmm. So I got one of those. Okay. Now, just to be clear to everybody listening, this is a guy who used to eat Subway all the time. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, I'll still, I still get Subway every now and then, and Jersey Mike. You know, I'm, nothing I'm, wrong with I'm Jersey Mike's. Mike's. It's Subway that's the issue. <laughs> you don't like Subway? No, it tastes like plastic. Darian and Anna always make a point to like make fun of me for liking Subway. It tastes like plastic. So. Um. Nope. The one well, you gave me. the wrong answer on if you would go again, because the right answer would have been would have been Darian winning a pain again. Yeah. So <laughs> just, just, just you know. Well, so I think I do think it's funny. We do need to tell the the. I'll let you tell the seeing Maddie story uh, because we have a Anna and I have a different spin on that story. So so explain for those people know who Maddie is because Maddie comments on our podcast a lot and and is a one of our super fans, if you will. So. Explain the running into Maddie Pryor and what that experience was like. No, it, it was, I, I was sitting, you know, I get the top row in the middle because okay. with movie theaters, I just like being on the top because it's just like no one can bother you behind you. Um, and then I saw her walk in with Mike, her, her husband, and, you know, the game was going on and stuff or it was getting started. So I didn't want to like yell for her and kind of interrupt. So I waited for like a commercial at one point, and then I went and like just surprised her. That was it. I didn't know that she was going to be there. This was not planned. I just saw her there. We we were. I was laughing because Anna Anna texted me during the or we we're sitting. We were obviously, we we're sitting together at the game, and it was oh Maddie's seeing it at IMAX, and I was like, wait a second, Eric and Maddie kind of live near each other, and then that was when we realized that you and two were together. So I thought that was funny. Um, okay, that's that's all we wanted. Um. Any, I, I sent you a gift card for your for your food, so you you, you can't expense anything. Is what I'm telling you here. I use it for the for the pizza and the soda. Uh, okay. Again, so thank, thank okay. you for that. Okay. So hopefully that covered the cost because you know, <laughs> we love you. Um, I, I was gonna I was gonna ask to reimburse me for gas, but oh, it's oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll Venmo you five five cents per gallon. It's it's okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for doing that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hanging out. Anything else you want to add? You're welcome. No, if, if you need me to go in and correspond elsewhere. Okay. Look at that. Uh, See, we're going to start building up our correspondent group. That's great. Yeah, I, uh, I'm down. Okay. I, I have the. Hopefully he can write. The, maybe the guy who taught him writing, he'll, he'll be okay. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's all right. He's all right. Yeah, I could write something up. So um, yeah, no, it was, it was enjoyable. I'm actually, gl I'm actually glad you like mentioned it because it was, if I had not gone then and, and then I would have wanted. I wanted to go to check it out, so I'm glad that I went. It, it, at least you got an experience out of it, I guess. right? It, it, exactly, it was something different. Couch, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it was. It was interesting, and I, I would do it again, depending on the opponent. But yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Cool. Thanks, well, thanks. Thank you very much. All right. No problem. Uh, game day experience wise, I thought it was the the for a crowd that came off of an Ohio State loss. It was loud. It was loud, and it. It wasn't super loud, but it was an involved crowd, and I was impressed that they got 110. And it was a, an authentic 110. It was up in your old neck of the woods. It was pretty pretty well packed, and the student section was pretty well packed early. I thought that was good. Um, so I think that that was of, of note and want to call that out. Um, I did write about the flag today. I could not write about the flag. I just uh, somebody, you know. So. <laughs> um, 
Nothing special, though. I had, I, no, I had somebody, had when they marketing something. person talked to my yeah. class, they was like, well, there's something that's going to happen, and when you see it happen, and there's I, a chance it wouldn't happen, wouldn't come together. So maybe it didn't come together, whatever that was. I don't know what it was, because so. it didn't, it seemed relatively normal to me. Any other, no other changes presentation-wise or whatever Not else? Or, really? There was a, and maybe I just didn't notice it from an Ohio State game, but there was a pump-up video, a better pump-up video in the fourth quarter uh, before the question um i thought that was good um and the scoreboard looked cleaner um yeah i thought uh, it was it was it had a good entry process we got in we went in a little earlier so um they they've with one game left we've kind of figured out the machine and then they'll screw it all up next year and start all over again it is funny how you can rely on that isn't it it's funny. so um okay that's about it there um, I'll talk about the other big sports media story of the week, which was was Ben Herbstreet's passing, which I think was was pretty sad. And Steve and I are both dog lovers, so this segment's probably gonna get a little emotional. What are your thoughts, Steve? So I listened. I woke because we were busy all day, and I didn't. We had the TV for getting TV and computer for game day, but as happens, people get around and you just don't pay pay attention. So I just shut it down. So I didn't see the Kirk Herbstreet stuff till afterward, on set, and then the video. I'm, Good Lord God, like. <laughs> It was impressive. I'm was sitting there watching, going, did. "No, I'm not crying. You're crying." Like it was just like, and he's choking up as he's talking through it. Like it was just. I thought. I thought you want to. You want to endear like you want to find an endearing moment about why game day is so well appreciated. Watch that entire segment and watch the part with with them talking about Ben, not the the segment of of, of that Kirk did alone. Like that was very impressive for him to talk about his dog that way. I, the 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 uh, Reese Dave like Kirk Herbstreit's trying to talk and he's so overwhelmed with emotion he can't um and Reese Davis like handles it like an absolute professional and kind of carries it and I thought that was great and then there's the moment with Lee Corso reaching his shoulder arm around Herbstreit's shoulder which I thought and I think we've talked about this before there's been this kind of like a, since Herb or since Corso's health has kind of gone down a little bit and he hasn't been the old Corso. Herb Street has really lifted him up and like been his yep. like go-to guy. And to see him do that in that moment, Corso do that for Herb Street there, it was like, yeah, like th- this is this isn't just them working together. This is a genuine true friendship that I think uh, I thought was just like a really cool moment. And I think is one of the reasons why like it's so easy to appreciate game day and, and why they it felt so inviting because they it's 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 authentic. Even with it, when it's a little salesy, um, so I thought that was good, and I, I thought the package, like the the thing about Ben was like I thought they did a nice job of like I, I thought like that was my first thought. He he was not Herb Street's dog. I mean he was, but he was he a lot of people were really sad last week when he died because like Kirk Herb Street had shared him with them, and I I just think shared uh shared him with us, and I I think. That goes a long way, and I, I, I just as a dog lover, like I said, I really appreciate that as a, as a human. Yeah, I, I think in terms of the sports media point of it, I think that, as you said, is what differentiates the shows, right? Like, differentiates that show among the others. It, it, it's become, it's become personal. People are invested in it, right? You know, there's, you know, probably not everybody on the Fox set has a sign for them, but the dog had multiple signs right. wherever they go. Like, I'm here to see Ben. So. Yeah, it was just, it, I thought it was well done. I thought it was humanizing. I thought it was personal. And that's what, that's what makes sports and college sports and all this stuff special. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think that's, I've been thinking about that a lot. Like the, the, the kind of going back to this Fox discussion that's happening today is like this corporate infusion can be done in the way that College Game Day does it, which is sponsored, built, or sorry, built by the Home Depot. And they have so many little sponsorships. And Old Dominion Freight is is one of the big sponsors. Coca-Cola is a, was another one for a few years. Like, And then there's Big Noon that's kind of just like generic and inauthentic. And I think that's what separates college football from the NFL, really any other sport, is, is there's an emotional tie here. And when you can share that and, and figure out what that is, like people are going to gravitate towards that. And that goes back to our conversation with like the reverence for the whiteout. There was no, there was no big emotion. There was no cinematic shot. Um, there was no 
Well, there were cinematic shots, but there was no cinematic buildup, cinematic feeling to it. And that's really what the, the whiteout has become, at least for Penn State fans. So to do that a disservice is, is frustrating. Um, so I, I no, I but going back to the, the, the Herb Street and Ben thing, like I, I thought that was just perfectly well done. And, and that couldn't have been, I mean, that was what three days after after Ben died like that's good for her to, to be able to do that because anytime we've lost a pet here and I know a lot of people that are listening when they've lost pets here it's not easy it's really not easy so um yeah well it, it did on, on the positive side and lighter side it did it did embolden me a little embolden embolden encourage me a little bit that I've, I've told Susan my retirement plan is she says like, it's got to be at least five years. I said, well, what if it's five months and we start a we start a project where Guinness and I travel the country. We call it Guinness Goes, and we and we monetize that. Like, and there's a part of me that thinks it might be possible. So, we'll see. This is just Steve just trying to get trips to go around the country. That's what. But if any of you are out there, influencers, you know, want to help us out, help the dog and I help, travel. Help Steve. We'll take help. Guinness Go. She you're says just I trying to get a Guinness sponsor. I think I think that's what you're really. Guinness is not unattractive personable it's good that's i like that it's good beer it's a good dog i might not be as personable as, as, as herbie though so that, that might be where it falls down i'm making i'm making <laughs> gestures for those listening they it's, could hear the silence yeah. um okay uh speaking of traveling uh penn state travels to west lafayette on saturday 3 30 um back to back 3 30 starts now because the minnesota game is also going to be at 3 30 and on cbs so back to back cbs games um i don't know if i have i haven't i haven't formulated an opinion yet on saturday's contest aside from take keep taking care of business and like not don't screw this up and it, it was just really bad though right like i mean they, they sure can't... but it's also purdue <laughs> you know like they how many times are they a giant slayer not this year. Uh, okay. All right. Not this Thank year. You. That's why I keep no. around. I, no. I, I'm, I thought James Franklin. Are you going? No, I'm not going. Because okay. to be blunt, because it's not going to be a good game. Well, it's not because of that. It's not. It's because there's nothing to do out there. It's, it's, it's the like. I was trying to explain this to somebody. I'm like West Lafayette feels like. Uh, maybe a quarter of of state college i think is the best way to say that like it it, everything just feels like a shrunken down state college it's beautiful it's great but i'm just and it's a pain in the butt to get to and then i gotta travel for work on monday the next week and so no you can can save your money you can save your ticket money for playoff my ticket yeah so um that's about how i feel about saturday okay i think you're right okay but i think it'll be lopsided and it'll be interesting to see how cbs makes it interesting tv I feel like if they do. Do you think we'll get the drone shot nine hundred times like we got against? It won't have to go very far because the stadium's not as big as the Coliseum. Well, that's the thing. Like, I think I think part of the drone shot was like you're in Hollywood. Let's have this big cinematic shot. Uh, and I think it's still in their arsenal. I think it's still in their arsenal. Yeah, I mean, what's like? There's you. You and I have both been there and. I, there's not really yeah if question. you were gonna go i was gonna that guy sold his house i didn't know if the new guy was letting people park in oh, the yard. i was gonna yeah. tell you to check yeah that, guy. that, that house sold so well, um no un, un, uneventful straightforward i think the only thing that's missing that will be missing is is if purdue actually scores right like you'll see the light show thingamajig that will probably be here someday because everybody's doing it now but um have we talked? Yeah. We've talked about the light show. At least I have said I want the light show. How do you feel about the light show? Oh God, no! I don't want the light show. Come on, Steve just wants him. Steve just wants him to play football. He wants want a football, football field full uh, with a football field goal post, some lights if they need it. Maybe not that. Somebody's bitter, keeping I, keeping score just on like everybody their phone. Else, just because so now I will go. Okay. Just because everybody else is doing it, we have to have a light show. Can't we make something of our own special if we do something along those lines? Here's let's let I was surprised, and this is just coming off the Eros tour. Uh, so when, when you go to the Eros tour, you get these little bracelets, and they they light up, and then they like sync to the music and like everything that's happening. And so sometimes it'll be blue, sometimes it'll be purple, red, whatever. Um, Alabama or Georgia did it. Maybe it was ten. One of the SEC, one of the bigger SEC stadium schools did it for one of their night games earlier this year. And I really thought that we were going to get uh, those on Saturday. And I was a little disappointed that we didn't. 
because I thought that would have been fun and cool um, to have. The one thing I, I do want to say is, I, and I tweeted this, the pom-poms, pom-poms, I've never seen this before. Maybe this was the little surprise thing. Uh, the pom-poms said the greatest show in college sports on them, as opposed to just like sponsored by the Penn State Alumni Association or the Penn State Bookstore, I forget, whichever, whatever. Did they have neither, maybe, maybe they're athletics pom-poms now. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe those people aren't sponsoring it anymore. Well... The S zone or the Shakers are still sponsored. They still do the Shaker ad read. Okay, but I don't no, know. No, I'm just saying, maybe they didn't, they're not giving it away. Maybe somebody isn't paying for it. And they're just going to own that. I, I, but I thought it was a cool thing. I know mm. there's one school that does down in the south that does them, and they put the game on them. So it'll say like it would say like Penn State versus Washington, and then that date. Um, and I know that there's people that cl- like from their student days that would collect them and put tape on them. But I think that would be a, a neat. Neat souvenir. All right, let's get the old guy, young guy. It was peacock related, okay. because you you would I was disappointed in me, and you would be disappointed in me. I was going to use the friends account that I think we have on our TVs, but I'm like, no, that's they may be watching the game, and I don't know if it's whatever. So I'll sign up. Right? It took me much longer to sign up than it should have. Like it just did. Like I clicked it, and it gave me the QR code for the screen. So I put my phone to screenshot the QR code, and it didn't. Like it just didn't loop so then i'm like okay i'm gonna do this manually so then i had to like type in my gmail email and then i missed a letter and i had to go it, it, it was bad it was old person fail we had we had my one of my best friend's daughters here with us who came to join us for dinner and i'm like maddie you're a little disappointed in me right now aren't you admit it and she's like yeah just just a little yeah. i'm a little concerned by the motion you just made about the qr code in the phone well you gotta Cause... hold your phone up it was you, but you like the way you did it. You made it seem like you held the phone really close to the screen. Oh no, 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 okay, I didn't. Sorry, no, no, okay. other side of the room. No, I didn't. Thank walk God. Over. No, no, thank God. No, um, I, that that part worked. It just then my phone got like into this like death loop of with Peacock, right? And I'm like, oh, I'll go back and I'll type in the stuff. And it was just maybe I have too long of an email. Maybe I'm going to give you the benefit of the long. doubt because of the streaming services that we have, Peacock is the one that we have the most trouble with. It it was much wonkier than other stuff I've signed up for on TV. Yes, uh, I think I will give you the benefit of the doubt there. Good, I'll take it. Um, but I was a little disappointed. A little myself. disappointed. I'm like, this game's going to kick off before we get this thing done. But I didn't miss the pregame show because there was none. I was gonna get mad at this part, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. we have been Anna and I have been discussing how good her parents Dave and Judy are with technology, and my mom is okay with technology. However, she's not great with the TV technology, so I was very relieved that I did not get a phone call Saturday, <laughs> and I was very proud of her. So, well, wait, wait, she she's she's not good with the TV technology. What other technology is it that's important? She's not. She she doesn't. She has a computer. She doesn't use her computer a ton. She's more of a phone okay. user, and she she can she she takes some really good pictures. If you want a good picture of the Penn State Altoona campus's pond, ask Bev Summers. Um, that being said, she we we had to buy her a Roku because in her defense, the TV the TV had this weird operating system that was not working. We bought her a Roku for her birthday um, in case there was going to be a Peacock game primarily. Um, and she struggled with the fact that you have to sw- hit the button to switch the HDMI ports um, and didn't realize that and so fi- couldn't figure that out a few weeks back. But she's gotten no, it now. Kinda, but, no, so, but, but I'm kind of happy I don't have a couple different inputs. Like in comes, in comes the internet service, right? Then I can switch between my services for But if I had to switch between ports with things that were serving it, that'd be another thing that was, you know, just a pain. So all right. we were talking. One of the other people that was closer to my age that was here was like, you know, I'd be okay with the days of a monopoly, right? Like, and I'm like, well, what you're talking about is cable. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so... I, would, I don't think we're going back to that, but yes. Well, and like that's the like kind of the funny thing about this like streaming issue is like I feel like we are kind of in the like monopoly because I, I don't know it just depends on how you look at it. Like when people are like, "Well, you got to pay to get that game." Well, you had to pay to get the other games all those other years. We get BTN all those other years type thing. So I don't know. That was that was my. But we were one of the uh, Penn State. To its consistency and grumbling about stuff, it was one of the last. The cable companies here, one of the, we're one of the last adopters for BTN. Well, I remember they made that a, being a, a thing. Full fledged push 
they had like little pep rallies and things at local restaurants to like get people to come out and learn about BTN and and push their cable companies to subscribe and, and, and want it. And it felt like the fight was tougher in this market than some other places in the conference. I remember that being a thing because we that was when we switched to I think that was when we switched to direct TV was when BTN came around because whatever service that was in Altoona at the time didn't ought wasn't going to offer it. And there was a chance you weren't going to be able to watch the football games. And I know there's a lot of other people that thought that was an issue as well. So. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Uh, well, I'm proud of you for figuring that out. I really am. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. This week on the blog, I don't know what we'll have on the blog. Probably probably some normal stuff. But, um, we'll still follow the game and hang out there and do all that stuff. On Saturday as well, um, depth charts, everything else leading up to it. Uh, five stars, thumbs up. I'm going to say thank you to Eric for joining us, because by the time you listen to this, he will have joined us. Uh, so that's good. We appreciate that. Appreciate him going to, to an IMAX theater, even though he loves movie theaters. Um, and then other than that, we have a website. On that website, there's a section. Oh, no, sorry. The website's called stuffsummersays.com. On that website, there's a section called with. Steve. I was too eager to give you your own, own little shout out there. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, please subscribe, all of that. Um, then we're going to ask you to email us. My email is Darian at stuffsummersays.com. Steve says. Steve at stuffsummersays.com. Perfect. And my Twitter handle is uh, at stuffsummersays. Steve says. At Steve Sampson. See ya. Bye. <laughs>